Hearthstone Champions League. My name is Nimsh and I'm here with Raven. And oh man, we've seen two very fast matches with Colento, Stansivka, 6-0. And this is the winner's match. So Stansivka 1 versus Colento, 3-0. And 6-0 defeated Dog, 3-1. They now face each other. And whoever wins this is going to advance to the top eight. How are you doing, Raven? Yeah, yeah it's good. It's going to be really good. I'm excited for this. So... Stan Sifka's picked his Hunter first, which we know is quite an aggressive Hunter deck, and Sixo's got his Secret piled in, so I actually think the uh, the Hunter lines up fairly well versus this deck. It's not terrible. I think um, potential Mag Juggler Unleash ends this game pretty quickly, uh, but even so, like the Secrets don't do too much for the Hunter, because other than Noble Sacrifice, pretty happy about just smoking and they're ending the game pretty soon, I think. You're pretty excited to see Hunter, right? You're a Hunter specialist or a Hunter fanboy, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, well, one of those two. Um, yeah, I, I like Hunter and I'm really looking forward to Standard actually to see what um, if there are any changes to the base Hunter cards um, and you know any new cards to do with a new expansion. Because Hunter's been uh, left in the cold a little bit recently and I'm, I'm not a fan of that, so... <laughs> yeah, I, I absolutely agree. But, uh, you know, we had a couple of years of Hunter, so I'm fine with not having him, at least for now. In standard, it might actually return. But uh, what do you think about this specific deck that Stan Sivka brought? He's running those aggressive cards like Leopard Gnome and Argent Horse Rider, but he also has a Freezing Trap. Yeah, this sort of leans towards the more hybrid variant um, uh, of, of like the new age aggro hunter because it used to be the fact that uh, you know face hunters just ran double explosive because it's more damage. But it actually, pretty quickly found out that freezing traps can just lock out those uh, more controlly decks even harder because they normally just drop in you know one or two big minions as opposed to swarming the board themselves. So freezing trap gets enough tempo to get more damage out of, say, your minions and, and being able to use your hero power more, uh, which means the explosive trap, uh, or lack of, should I say, is actually negated by the freezing trap. So it's a pretty good play. And um, especially on a board like this, I wouldn't even mind freezing trap now because it just slows the piloting down so much. Yeah, that's, that's a really good explanation. And uh, Stan Sivka was taking his time fully, so it's not like you have to play super fast in tournaments. You can take your time, think about uh, stuff. And uh, he's also drinking and eating. So this is uh, something that no he surprise. always does, right? <laughs> yeah, this is no surprise whatsoever. And I kind of, I think th this is good because this shows that the way he approaches tournaments, whether he is at home in his room or at a big, you know, a big live event, he puts himself in the same environment every time. He sits comfortable, just eats and drinks how he would at home. And having a consistent mindset is actually probably really helpful when it comes to sort of high pressure tournaments. Yeah, I agree. And he is one of those guys who is, um, well, not, br br um, well, he's uh, really good with the stress and the pressure. Where on the other hand, Sixo, is um, is known for actually breaking up when uh, something bad happens, but uh, yeah, he's seems... also growing himself as a player. Yeah, I think uh, he's, uh, the key one is like he's emotional. I think when he's doing well, it helps him because you know he's like really pumped up for it. And then when things go wrong, you know he flicks the other way. Whereas Stan Sivka, I've seen him playing tournaments where crazy things have happened, and his facial expression doesn't even move. He's he's like Hoy to a certain extent. Another similar player where he he's just very chilled out and just just takes it as it comes and doesn't really get too flustered either way, or at least doesn't show it. He's still team. Uh, he's still teamless though, at the moment. Yeah, I don't even think he even he's even bothered. <laughs> like, not that I've spoke to him about it specifically, but I think because he I think he practices with a lot of his Magic: The Gathering friends. Yeah. That it's not like he needs Hearthstone teammates to practice, and as proven, he's pretty good. So you know, I think he's doing okay. But looking at this hand though, like Sixo's sort of got the board dominance here, and this game's gone really slow. Um, you know, a lot slower than expected at least. But we can see that, you know, just ticking away the hero powers, the leper no, really starting to just push the power there a little bit low. Yeah, absolutely. And um, now he needs to deal with... Uh, does he really need to deal with uh, Knife Juggler? Because the quick shot feels like it fits. But on the other hand, if there is a redemption, uh, one of the secrets, that's a tough I, turn. Yeah, I think there's... It feels bad, but I think Creeper Hero Power is fine. Look at the amount of burn in your hand. And Secret Paladin, other than, say, a True Silver, isn't really known for its healing, right? Mm. So if you just weave in the Hero Powers that you can, and then there's Double Kill Command and a Quick Shot, and 
potentially Huffer, but you know, less so, less impactful because of cards like Noble Sacrifice. I think just pushing the damage is really nice. You're still on 28, so you're fine. So we are literally seeing the Face Hunter or like Hybrid Hunter, one of the fastest decks, taking it slow. <laughs> I think it's just uh, uh, optimizing damage and uh, whilst trying to, you know, negate a bit of your opponent's pressure. But this, you know, the juggle was pretty nice there for 6 so He misses the second one, but the creeper's just as good to clear it up, so that's fine. Um, Stan Sivka, he has a lot of burn, but maybe not the tools to get to the point where he can actually finish him off now, as there starts to be quite a lot of pressure from 6 -0. This uh, Horse Rider is an interesting card to play and to check for the secrets, but uh, checking for secrets can be deadly. If there is a Noble Sacrifice Redemption into Avenge, that will be a lot of extra power on board that you're just enabling, and um, you will lose the horse, horse Rider as well because of the Noble Sacrifice. So it's a, it's a tough pick for Stansivka, even though he has a lot of bursts in hand, as you mentioned. Sixo is still at 20, and Sixo will start pressuring from the next turn. Yeah, and one of the issues is is that because there's three secrets down and avenge noble sacrifice uh two of the like two ofs in the deck normally statistically you have to go with the fact that two of those secrets are avenge and noble sack which means that you know as you said you know pointed out quite rightly that this is going to be a problem if he just tries to run something in and hope because he would then have to use say uh, the quick shot to kill an avenge target which then removes more of that burn and I think the burn is the only way he's going to get through this game now. He got the Misha so it's going to delay uh, his opponent, the Paladin, which is really good for him. Uh, but he just needs a little bit more and Unleash would be really good I think now yeah. just to push through some damage and prop the secrets whilst still being able to pressure just enough. And also enable the kill commands to deal for, uh, 5 damage instead of 3. So Unleash the Hounds uh, might be the card he needs specifically in this very moment to, to win the game. Shredder is not terrible. You can slam the Shredder and Hero Power, but then there's uh, 11 damage, 12 damage on board for 6 0. Yeah. And then you start thinking about he knows there's a token in hand and the Hero Power. So that's up to 14 with the Juggles potentially. Uh, and Repentance, pretty rough on the Shredder. Um, he pretty much just needs something like just at any taunt, a Doomslayer, just to, just to slow the Paladin down a little bit more. Because if you have a look, 6 0's on 16, and Sifka's got a lot of burst potential over the course of like two to three turns and there's a heal <laughs> vitality it, well or, or i guess a taunt it's a heal for three i guess um so that's not terrible but uh he's just sifka's so close to being able to burst this out but he needs to survive say two turns and i don't think he can with his current hand yeah it seems like stan sifka will not be able to to win this game and just to remind you um the viewers we are watching hearthstone champions league this is the first day we just started this is the third game of the day. We had Colento, Sixo, Stansivka, Doc playing out. This is the winner's match. So the winner of this um, game will actually, well, the, the whole match will advance to the top eight uh, where there's single elimination. There's $10,000 prize pool, best of five conquests. That's the format. And we'll be back tomorrow as well with Group B. And then on Thursday and Friday, Group C and D uh, consecutively. And we have a sick lineup. Do you remember, uh, Raven, who is uh, in our lineup? Yeah, so Group A, as we've said, we've got Six Oplento, Sifka and Dog, which will end today. Group B, we have Ecop, RDU, Pavel and Hoy. Group C is Sho, Life Coach, Strifeco and Orange. And Group D is Oskaka, Hannibal Z2 and Tides of Time and Ty. So all stacked groups all around. Yep, and if you follow a specific player, show up on that day to watch the, the, the matches and see if your player can actually advance from the group. We are playing a double elimination. GSL system, so two players will advance and two players will get eliminated every day. Yeah, very nice of Sifka to actually wait for us to finish that plug there to, to do his turn. So <laughs> he's just taking his, his whole turn out. It's like, oh, the guys are talking. Just what, one second? Such a um, good guy. So he now he's going with like the only option he really has, but he'll swiftly realize this isn't enough and that's going to be game. And I think, like, all I can think is how different this game would be with an Unleash the Hound's draw. Like, it would be so different. Like, it would be so... It's probably just flipped on its head in terms of Sifka's favor. So, got a little bit unlucky with that draw, but Sixo played well, just creating the consistent threat that if Sifka wanted to deal with, he'd have to use his burn, which then in turn makes the pile in safer to continue on to the late game. I absolutely agree with you, and I think uh, when you when you think about matchup Hunter versus Paladin, Unleash the Hounds is always this card that will change the matchup in favor of Hunter, because Paladin will naturally 
overextend his board with four, five, six minions. And Unleash the Hounds not only punishes that, but uh, exploits that that weakness. Yeah, one of the big moves is actually the uh, turn five juggler unleash because that can just end games. Like you just you so so favored and like you know consistently clear up the board with that kind of turn. It swings it so hard. It's uh, normally just makes the hunter win there and there. But we are onto game two. Sixo's moved on to his rogue, and Sifka switched over to his zoo lock. Yeah, and this zoo seems to be the more aggressive one of Argent Squire. So this will not be the demon version. Yeah, this looks like, uh, again, sort so of similar to the zoos we've seen before. Um, but again, you see Sifka do slight altercations on, say, the standard like net decks we see all the time, where Argent Squire isn't a super common pick in most zoo decks. And, uh, but Sifka has the uh, reputation for just taking what he likes in terms of the uh, soft pocket picks within the decks. What do you think about uh, Coin Peddler instead of just uh, slamming the Squire into one? Uh, I think the Squire makes it makes the hero power from Sixo a little bit too easy because it's not too common where Rogue has a like super strong turn two play. A lot of the time, it's just Dagger. Um, but Dagger take the shield off and then they've got the Dagger next turn to kill the Squire is pretty reasonable. Whereas now, Sif what Sifka's saying is, one, I have a mystery one drop you don't know about now, which could be, you know, one of a multitude of cards. But now also, you need something more than just your hero power to kill this 2-2. And if you don't have it, then you're tanking double the amount of damage it would take to clear up the Squire. Yeah, it makes uh, a lot of sense actually. And now he can follow up with uh, another 2 drop. So dealing 4 damage with the Dark Peddler I was a really smart move there. But now he has a plethora of two drops. <laughs> so Nerubian Egg, not pressuring much, but he will have an enabler, Dark Peddler, another good two drop that can, that has to be dealt with and he will get a card. And you always want to get those extra cards early to be able to make uh, smart choices. Yeah, and Power of Overwhelming is definitely one of the top picks that you can get from Peddler. Um, I think Sifka's really setting up for just a strong build-up. I think next turn, he can probably afford to play Egg and Squire, uh, just because, as we can see, Sixo is having a really slow rogue start. None of those terrifying ones where it's backstab SI7 agent and suddenly you're just dead. Um, so quite a slow start from Sixo. But it means Sifka can take it a little bit slower himself and doesn't have to rush too much. Yeah, absolutely. So, would you recommend Nerubian Egg and uh, Argent Squire this turn? Yeah, I think the Egg and Squire represents uh, multiple sort of potential threats to six. So, uh, Defender of Argus next turn could be horrendous on an Egg and the Divine Shielded Minion. But then he has the option for the Dire Wolf. He could just straight up implosion. He has two Egg procs in the form of the Power of Whelming and the Abusive Sergeant. So, I think because the Egg and the Squire represent the most sort of troubling potential on Sixo's side it is, is the best play to go. But, yeah. you know, Sifka's, I'm happy to say, is a better player than I am, so he might do something <laughs> different. Well, or, uh, well, that, that's why uh, we are here to explain the plays anyway. So I, I like the Nerubian and uh, Argent Squire. I think uh, your explanation was, uh, was on point. And on the other hand, from Sixo's side, uh, just uh, playing Violet Teacher here Thank doesn't you. make much sense because you want to get that coin from Tomb Pillager and it would uh, probably just die. Like you, when you see Nurban Egg, you expect it's gonna be buffed. Yeah, it's one of those things. It's like the old Fiery War Axe on two from a warrior, isn't it? You just expect that your opponent just has it somehow. Uh, and they normally do a double implosion. Hmm. It's, it's interesting. Uh, it's really tempting, but uh, with... Uh, well, I guess you don't have to break the egg at the moment. With Implosion, you will get some board and hopefully easily kill the 5-4. Um, if you get 4, you force your opponent to have an AoE card, something like Flurry or Fun of Knives. And if they cast it, uh, Sixo will lose the weapon, uh, you're not losing everything, and uh, you force the, the mana to be spent as well. Yeah, and I think uh, it's tough because you never feel good about the imps getting like, all mown down by AoE the turn after they're played. But what you've also got to think, that's like, an actual fairly low value board for the, the robe to spend on like Blade Flurry, for example. It's not too bad. He is looking to just proc the egg instead. And this is fine. He doesn't overcommit to the board here. And the chances of this whole board getting cleaned up are pretty slim. Yeah. It's not removable by AoE, there will have to be an AoE and a Viscerate, for example. Yeah, which is like, you know, a, a reasonable sum of resources. And when he's got the follow-up of two implosions, the Direwolf to get extra value from those tokens and the Juggler, as we saw in the previous two games today, it's you always want to represent a threatening board enough to warrant some sort of awkward AoE clear. 
yeah. and then you fill up again. You it's, know, you just fill the boat again and go for it. It's not that awkward for Sixer though, because he has Violet Teacher into Coin, into Eviscerate, into 4-4, four, four, and just kill the 2-1 with a weapon. So you have Violet Teacher and, what, two, two dudes? And uh, there is only a 2-2 two, two and 1-1 one, one on board left. Uh, you still have sprint preparation uh, in your hand, and you have Loth up as a follow-up, so... Uh, is he going for the preparation, though? Does he want to... Hmm... I don't know what he's doing. Well, he's using Play Flurry to clear the board, so he'll attack in the 2-1 the um, and still eviscerate to kill the 4-4, four, four, or a 4-3, rather. Yeah, well, he can't attack with the weapon now, though. So he would have left a very similar board up anyway, right? Uh, he can... S oh, yeah, he can weapon up. Yeah, because his, his weapon was on one durability, so... You're right, you're right. So yeah. instead of... So he actually sacrificed preparation to generate one more minion. Yeah, it's kind of a... Yeah, kind of, kind of weird, actually. Probably uh, overdid it. I don't know if that was a slight error on 6 O's part. We'll see. But what we did see that turn was, again, the power of Tomb Pillager, actually. Where the um, where the coin it generates uh, enables the rogue to just squeeze in that bit more, uh, uh, you know, potential card usage or pressure. Yeah. Uh, still, even though a six O ends up with a sludge belcher on empty board, which uh, cannot be bad, and he will have a lothop follow up with um, a weapon, and this implosion might be huge if it kills the the belcher. Three chances. Oh. It still has a chance. Oh, last one. Oh, that is actually pretty big. <laughs> yeah. And look at the follow-up. There's Dival Alpha to buff uh, the tokens consecutive, uh, consecutively if they want to kill themselves on something. There's Argus, two Creepers, which is good, nice sticky minions there. And Sixo's pretty much going to be reliant on this sprint doing some work, I think. Yeah, and he's actually dropping pretty low because he has to attack into the juggler. So going down to 12. Uh, Lothab is a nice minion, but uh, if you don't have any clears in your hand, then it will be tough to clear the, the board for uh, on the zoo side. Yeah, I think the issue for Lothab at the moment for Sixo is it's a good strong minion, but it's one minion when you're facing a lot of small minions, so you can only attack once, right? And there's no way to taunt it up, so I think Sifka's got a good few options here. He probably can afford to leave the Lothab up, because he is sitting on 27 and the rogue's only on 3 cards. He might he has the option to kill it, but I don't know if it'll be worth it with the rogue being on such low health. I think you might just want to go for it at this point. Yeah, absolutely. Just um, going for face and then um, Haunted Creeper. You'll be able to use Haunted Creeper with Knife Juggler next turn to generate some extra damage. Uh, you're in a great position. Uh, Sap does not do much. You'll be able to sap one of the imps. And that's um, kill the other. That's basically yeah. it. And pick off a 1-1 one -one with the weapon and re-dagger, I guess. That's the best he's got. But we can see that now there's, what, 2, 3 damage? Four, five, six. He's missing he's 1, I guess, right? Uh, no, I think five. he can get it if he hits the juggles, right? Because yeah, he yeah, has the yeah. 1 imp now. He's missing damage. If he hits the juggle, he, he wins. Unless he picks up something like Power of Whirlwing. Or the Fire of Argus. Yep, that should that be enough, work. right? That's plus, uh, plus 2, which means this is 5. And then uh, Wolf on the on either side, and it's fine. Yeah. All right, so Stan Sivka uh, ties the game 1-1 versus 6 -0. Yeah, pretty pretty, um, pretty rough game for 6 -0 there. Stan Sivka just kept the pressure on and just didn't let up whatsoever. And 6 -0 never got like a nice or clean board, board clear. He always had to do like, awkward things, and that's what you want to do versus Rogue. Just make them like uh, use too many of their resources to clear the board and then just keep the pressure up. But I definitely think having the two jugglers, the creeper, and the two implosions were really key in that match just to keep the board full regardless of any AoE. So 6 0 still has this rogue left and he has his own zoo ready because he locked his paladin winning versus Hunter. And then Stan Sivka locked Warlock so he still has his face or, hy or rather hybrid Hunter and a druid deck. He picks druid this time into that row and uh, who do you think is favored in this match because there's a lot of discussion about this <laughs> and a lot of disagreement yeah it's really tough i think it's um i think it's slightly favored for the druid um but you know <laughs> if the, the thing is like it's really hard to say a druid's like super unfavored in any deck that isn't say like tempo mage but um i think it's slightly favored for the druid but if the rogue gets like the the 
eviscerates, I guess, on, on the bigger minions and can just clear up easily with some prep shenanigans, then the rogue can just burst the druid down. And with saps, druid of the claws don't seem so much of a threat when you can just pull them off the board and, you know, continue to go for a big oil flowy turn, for example. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I think, like, one of the, the big cards or <laughs> big things here is the combo. So uh, at some point, druid can just uh, combo you out. Uh, but on the other hand, Rogue also has the, the Oil Flurry combo, which is possible. Um, whoever gets the tempo early, I think, uh, gets an advantage. And Stan Safeka already getting that Wild Growth into a pretty nice curve, I have to say. If he picks up something like an Innervate to be able to play Dr. Boom on turn 4, that will be quite big. Yeah, this is nice. So I like the Thanos here uh, because it's, it forces on turn 4. It, like, you either leave a spell pad minion you know, up, which means, for example, the Shredder is weak to backstab, um, or you have to kill it, and suddenly that's like two of your mana. Or he plays Keep of the Grove to kill it, which, again, that's a bit of a commitment for a 1-1. One -one. It does draw a card and have spell power, but it doesn't feel too great when you could have played Shredder on this turn normally. Yeah, it's true. I mean, is there any reason to Aspirant Hero power here, or do you think just you just go Shredder and just hope he doesn't have it? What about just Keeper Silence? Guide my land. Hmm. He, there's a chance for like weird stuff like Coin Oil though. Right? Oh no, he doesn't have Weapon up. Yeah, Silence could have been okay, I guess. Yeah, you deny, you deny the card drop, but uh, this is this is fine as well, absolutely. Yeah, this is the quickest deadly poison you'll uh, probably ever see. Because <laughs> Dance <laughs> Aspirant is definitely one of the key targets in the game you want to just kill off straight away. Yeah, Especially it's... after a wild growth. You do want to deal with it, but looking at Sixo's hand, Sixo's hand, it's it's really nice at the moment. Uh, he has that Violet Teacher with Backstab and Coin, and uh, Lothab, so he can generate a, a really nice board. But uh, Stansivka just got Druid of a Claw. Yeah, Druid of the Claw is really uh, weird in this matchup, though. So it it's definitely the play, but then you just feel, I mean. It's, it's good on on turn five because of like if it gets sapped where well, you've got all the time in the world right to replay it so it's fine but like later on it feels really weird whether you charge it or taunt it because if you charge it, it's weak to eviscerate if you taunt it it just gets removed from sap for a turn so it can be really rough but what you say about six o's hand is true like it has a lot of options which is key uh, that tomb pillager if you just had to play that then that feels kind of bad because it just dies to like swipe or something there was but an... having the options to be able to just squeeze it in as and when it feels is really nice there was an interesting uh, alternative with coining azure drake and then using backstab and weapon attack instead or so just throwing away violet teacher teacher was a bit questionable but now he can deal with the four free with the weapon attack as well so that violet teacher did tank the damage yeah, and now Flurry going to clear up uh, the first half of the Shredder as well, and it's uh, going to be an Elec drop down to a 3-2, straight away dies to backstab, and that Van Cleef is going to get shut down pretty hard. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's why Silence is really good in this matchup. Well, I, I said that because I've, I've seen Edwin. Like, normally there are not that many targets you can use Silence on, but Edwin is certainly the target you want to use it on. Yeah. The, the interesting thing is here, though, if he silences it, the rest of his turn isn't great, considering in his hand he's holding Dr. Boom and Ancient of Law, two extremely strong 7 drops. But the problem is the Law insta dies and doesn't even kill off the Van Cleef. But the Dr. Boom's definitely worth a thought, at least, I think. At, at worst, well, I'll say at worst, it gets sapped. You get to replay it with more Boom bots. But, you know, he might have to, might force Sixo into running Van Cleef into it, which then. You know, you, you've lost no damage and gained boom bots and, and one more point of removal, maybe. Um, I don't know. I think I like Dr. Boom at this point. If you if you get Dr. Boom, your opponent has um, five cards in hand. If you can deal with Dr. Boom in a way that, uh, like, even if there is a sap, I think you're in a bad spot yeah. overall. So I prefer the Keeper, but I think I agree with you that Dr. Boom was definitely something you could consider. Yeah, it just it, yeah, it's really hard to make a play like Keeper here when it just feels so slow when you have Doctor Boom glowing green in your hand. It's normally always the play, right? <laughs> yeah, when it's green, you just play it. But uh, I think Keeper just had too much value. 
And this is a really nice turn for six. So where now he's got like the wiggle room to just drop into Tomb Pillager. So I think that's one of the problems with you run into with the card sometimes. It's a 5-4 and that's it until it dies. So you sort of play it expecting it to get dealt with. But this, now he cleared the board, got the SI 7 Agent and the Tomb Pillager down on a pretty, pretty good turn actually. Um, by the way, the, the fact that he was able to play SA7 with the coin means that the turn when he threw the um, a Violet Teacher, with instead of playing Azure Drake coin, uh, paid off on uh, this specific turn, at least. Yeah, and he's going to renew the coin as well when the Pelager dies. Yeah, exactly. Um, hmm. Th th this match is really tense, actually. It feels like every single turn, if not quite done correctly, can just swing it either way because the both opponents are fairly close on health. Maybe not after this attack to face, but um, f they're fairly close on health. And both have actually a good selection of cards that are quite impactful. Lothab's going to come down now and lock out any uh, combo shenanigans. And the bomb was, will be very important as well. One yes. damage to six, so he has to be happy about it. That could have been a kill on a pillager, so... Now the spells yeah, are blocked. Or even to a lesser extent, if it killed off the SI, it still would have been pretty pretty decent for Sivka. Um, oh, there's some options now, isn't there? Really so rough. what can you what can you do here? Um, you can still you can kill the five five with Doctor Boom, that's for sure. And uh, you need to deal with the other minions. The nine oh, let's see. I like this. This is nice. Gives the highest chance to clear the board while still being able to do stuff. Four damage to oh, face matters. Yeah. And this looks uh, pretty good for Stan Sivka. Tomb Pillager is a kind of like a blank. Like, you can obviously play it, but it's not something you want to swing the board. You need to get the, a Blade Flurry. Oh, there's prep. He could coin prep fan, I guess. Uh, coin prep fan, coin prep sprint. <laughs> sprint uh, yeah. Coin prep fan would obviously be pretty reasonable here if, if he had fan of knives. But this is kind of rough now, and this is what I mean by each turn. Because Stan Sivka could, like, almost clean up really well there whilst putting a lot of pressure on the board, he's now just gained the advantage, whereas Six O's just. You know, drop some minions and now waited. So what if like combo comes down now? Game's just over. Well, it's just Sabzor actually. Sabzor would be enough, I believe. Uh, there is nine plus uh, thirteen, fourteen damage on board with the hero power, and then yep. you get plus eight, so that's twenty-two. He can go for Azure Drake or Raft to try to get that Sabzor. Uh, he will still need to hero power, so he needs five mana to win. If that's Sabzor, that's it. Oh. That's four. Oh, it's it's the the other piece. <laughs> Uh, but now Wrath for four actually just straight up kills the Tomb Pillager, yep. which is pretty nice. And again, like the more he just clears, um, the harder it gets for six. So because there's so much damage on the board, yeah. And, and again, the second, like even Force of Nature for six is pretty big. Yeah, it is. But uh, the the fun fact is that Doctor Boom might be on only two health, but it's still seven attack minion, and it's going to deal that seven damage to face. Unless uh, Stan decides to trade, now he goes for face with Dr. Boom, so he wants to put 6-0 in, in lethal range for the next turn. Yeah, and I like this play because the Druid of the Claws on one health, so quite weak, but if you look at the board overall, we didn't see 6-0 AoE the turn before, uh, so that was Sifka's view. He didn't see an AoE, so then you sort of presume, well, if he doesn't have it one turn that's pretty decent to play it, he probably doesn't have it the following turn, so putting all his minions on relatively low health is fine because it puts as much pressure as possible on the board. Oh man, he is missing that preparation. If he would have a preparation, that would be a clear, but uh, without it, not really. So, what's interesting is backstab. <laughs> Clearly, Stan Sifka is playing around backstab here and uh, <laughs> make, it, making it backstab fan do nothing. <laughs> the, the old backstab actually worked on any, uh, any target, so you could have oh, backstabbed really? the. Dr. Boom, but this is like from two, three years ago. Throwback. I'm glad that got nerfed. <laughs> I mean, Fan of Knives still does some work, but how do you, how do you kill Boom? How do, do, you, do, you, do you have it? to sap it? Uh, if you sap it, it buys him a turn, but... Oh, he's sapping the Drake. And face tanking Boom, okay. So he cleared the board. <laughs> somehow. Yeah, somehow. And he's not dead um, yet. Oh, now he is. He is. <laughs> So Druid does Druid things, and again, Sixo did the play there that would actually extend the game long enough. You know, next turn you could have played Belcher as your Drake, you know, whatever, he has the backstab. But the issue is, the longer the game goes on, the more chance the Druid has of drawing a combo that you just cannot answer. So, Stan Sivka takes that game uh, with a pretty, uh, pretty close game, actually. It felt like almost every turn was really tight. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, like, Druid even can double combo sometimes. At, at one moment in the, in the game, he didn't even need 
a combo, just the Savage Roar to deal 8 damage for 3 mana. That's why sometimes Savage Roar feels a bit unfair when you when you have it in those situations, because you just need a couple of minions on board and you can easily win. But um, to counter that point, Rogue needs uh, just one minion and then he can oil and through oil and flurry be able to deal an insane amount of damage himself. So Sixo kills Rogue again, he lost two games with it. And if he loses now, he's going to lose the match, but he will not be eliminated yet. This is the winner's match in Group A. Whoever wins this advances to the top 8 finals, but uh, whoever loses will face the, the winner of Dog vs. Colento. Yeah, and this is normally a rough matchup for the Rogue. I think Face Hunter vs. Rogue was one of the uh, the old archetype matchups that was quite heavily favored towards the Face Hunter because it was just too quick. Although looking at Sifka's hand, although it's nice to go 2-3-4, he didn't have the one drop, which is actually normally pretty key because Rogue on one, other than backstab or like if, if he was on two, like coining out the, um, the hero power is always rough. So Sifka had to go use his own coin there. And go straight into a two drop, and then has to sort of rely on the uh, the bow now. Is it isn't the bow one of the best cards versus rogue? Because you can always deal uh, damage to those minions, and it's six damage overall. Nothing really to stop the weapon, nothing to remove it. Yeah, it is, and the fact that like rogue um killing that SI is so big in this matchup because the SI is the early minion from rogue. They can actually normally trade fairly well versus, you know, with, with like Lepinome, for example, it kills the Lepinome or the Mad Scientist, and he's still alive to potentially prop that freezing trap afterwards, and then bounce back and then use again later when the rogue's got some more mana spare. So, um, it is definitely really good. Two bows, though, maybe not fantastic. <laughs> By the way, Raven, it's the second time where Sixer just slams the Taurus, uh, the, the, the Blood Mage. Yeah. And Stanislav is thinking what to do. <laughs> Why is this blood mage so difficult? Interesting that he's gone with Shredder. He, he could have like 50 50 it with the uh, juggler and Lepinome, but Shredder puts the most awkward minion on the board, definitely. Yeah. And uh, because he killed Falnus now, he knows the backstab will not clear it. Yeah. Well, it kind of will, but... Um, <laughs> what up, were right? you saying, Nymph? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the second SI is there, but you know, Sifka's got the bow, so that's okay. I imagine... Oh, a minibot's reasonable, I've heard. That's a good two-drop. Um, yeah, I move. imagine bow and hero power's okay here. You, San Sifka's going to want to actually just start piling on some damage onto the uh, onto Sixo himself. So... What about the Snipe Juggler as well? Because, I mean, not as well... But uh, Eagle, uh, Hornbow, and Knife Juggler, you've just seen a backstab and an SI7. You've actually seen double SI7 and one backstab. Yeah, that's true. I was just thinking because you can juggle a Leper Gnome Horse Rider next turn. Like, it's just a guaranteed six mana use, and you get the two juggles out of it definitely. Whereas if you drop the juggler and if it gets eviscerated, it's sort of a win for the hunter. It's, yeah, it's an eviscerate, but you do lose the potential for extra damage. So I think Bow's pretty good. That mini bot's going to be a pain in the ass as well. All right, makes a lot of sense. So Sludge Belcher for Sixo that uh, will just die to this. Uh, he goes for Azdrake. Backstab. Well, not not the using backstab and prep into fun of knives to deal with Shilu. Oh, is, is that that is? Do my idea. eyes deceive me? Is no, that no, a strangled tiger. tiger? It's a five-five stuff. It's a really decent. I heard hard to remove. It's like another kill command. It does empower kill command as well. Yeah, that's really interesting. And this is what I love about watching Stan Sifka. He's definitely one of my favorite players. Because this up until now looked like, yep, yeah, standard hybrid, fine. And the next minute, strangled from Tiger. Like, good job, Sifka. <laughs> I, I, I appreciate this kind of deck building. I think I've seen uh, Stranglethorn Tiger from him before, but uh, I, I really appreciate the card as well. And uh, here, I think attacking with the weapon first and then slamming Lepronome would be absolutely fine. You want to keep your minions uh, with the Divine Shield versus Rogue, and you don't want to miss that damage um, accidentally hitting the Azure Drake and then having still to attack into it. Yeah, because being blown out by one AoE is definitely rough, but being blown out by two is extremely hard for the Rogue to do when there's only really Fan of Knives and Blade Flurry in the whole deck that uh, that can deal with this. So keeping the Divine Shield is really good there. And look at this follow-up, like, how does the Rogue actually deal with Stranglethorn Tiger? Yeah, I mean, Sludge Belcher is one one way, not f uh, fully dealing with it, but something to block it, block it at least. But other than that, it's it's really hard because it's you can't deal five damage to a stealth carded from empty board, 
and you can't cannot target it, you cannot sap it. And six are there committing to um to double AoE, like we said. So although yes, Sifka's board got cleaned up, he made that like that's a pretty terrible turn for six. So having to spend that much of his, his whole turn into just clearing the board and giving the hunter the initiative. And when six or sees his tiger come down what, <laughs> <laughs> Spacious person just doesn't change, which is fine, I guess. But I would be a little bit surprised. And uh, he's probably happy that he does have the Belcher there. But imagine Owl at this point. Like, it would be horrendous. Yeah, Owl or even if you get something... Oh, exactly. Argent Horse Rider. This means that Tiger can connect to face. And he can still hero power. So he can kill command the Belcher, then play the Horse Rider, kill the one two. Go five to face and hero power, so basically set, uh, seven. Yeah, maybe you actually. Oh, okay. I was gonna say, yeah, you could either kill command the belcher and do it that way, or you can actually just drop the shredder as well and just not hero power. Which, although you lose like you know the two attack, um, you gain obviously the shredder on the board, and you've just seen all the AOE. Yeah, this is a really tough situation for six zero. He what? saps it to be played in stealth again. I mean, I'm not saying this is the wrong play, but it just looks horrendous, doesn't it? Yeah, like, that's painful. I'm going to sap this tiger that I cannot deal with the turn after next. But he's going to start racing Stan with this uh, big Edwin. So a 6-6. Six, six, uh, maybe. With double sprint, maybe he'll get there. But Stranglethor Tiger and the hero power might be just enough. Oh. Hmm. It's probably still Tiger plus uh, hero power, right? Seven mana. Yeah, I think you do. I mean, hmm. it's kind of rough because you, you, it, there's only one sap been used, right? Yeah, but what else can you do? Like, do you mean uh, Shredder as well? Well, yeah. Yeah, I was thinking like if you Tiger Shredder. Um, because the problem is, you've seen a flurry. I'm just trying to think of what, like, what if Sixo plays like Healbot next turn? Like,. I don't know whether he runs it, but that's your worry then if you only play one minion. Because then the rogue will race you with, uh, like, you know, heal bot into that tomb pillager or something like that. Yeah, but then you can attack uh, into Edwin with um, the tiger. But I agree with you. Yeah, absolutely. Shredder is an option as well. If, uh, if there is a heal bot, that would be a bit better. Yeah, I just think, like, th there's options, isn't there? You either push from all the damage and just presume he doesn't have it. Or you drop the Shredder and be a little bit safer versus heal and give the Rogue another headache to deal with. And he is going for the damage, okay. And even with the quick shot, makes sense because of a possible off the top deck. So you want to put your opponent as low as possible. And the fun of knives does not cut it. Can Sixo draw into something to deal with the Tiger if he gets another Belcher or, or the heal bot that you mentioned? It means you can only fan to top deck and it's Teacher, so. And that's there it. There we go. So Stan Sivka takes the series 3-1 versus 6-0, and a poor Valira lost three times. Yeah, that was that was very rough to see the rogue get uh, get beat on that hard. But when you know, like, let's be honest, that that style of hunter probably isn't a deck you expect to face in current sort of tournament meta, I suppose. So maybe uh, there's a slight gap in the lineup where the hunter's doing some work, and we saw that in the previous set with uh, Stan Sivka, Stan Sivka's hunter actually just. Uh, I think he demolished uh, Kalento's uh, Malagos Warlock, right? Yeah, well, um, Stan Sivka demolished the Kalento fully with well, yeah, a 3-0 <laughs> win. Um, but guys, I want to mention that uh, we will actually reset the stream in a couple of minutes and then we'll be back. So don't go anywhere, just give us some time to reset the stream and, and come back online. But for now, we're going into um, a break. We'll be back though, so don't go anywhere. The next match, I believe, is uh, Colento versus Dog, and that's an elimination match, so you don't want to miss that one. See you later.